peace. And a new scene opens. The object now is to make our independence work. To do this, we must secure our union on solid foundations. It's a job for Hercules, for we must level mountains of prejudice. Quit the sword, my friend. Put on the toga and come to Congress. We fought side by side to make America free. Let us, hand in hand, struggle now to make her happy. Alexander Hamilton is sitting as a delegate in the Continental Congress. Illegitimate, born in the West Indies, he came to New York City as a teenager to be educated. Unlike most of his fellow citizens, Hamilton has no attachment to any local region. Brilliant and arrogant, this 28-year-old is absolutely convinced that he knows where this young country should be going. Hamilton saw very quickly the potential for the United States, for the new nation to become a world leader. He believed that every potential was here, natural resources, population, the isolation from European intrigues and war. Hamilton believed in systematic planning and in the kind of ruthless wrenching of America from its pleasant agrarian attachments into a mercantile and then into a manufacturing society. And he was single-minded in his interest in making America all that it could be. Americans are just beginning to have a national vision. Artists and writers are the first to give expression to this nationalism. They mythologize the revolution itself, producing epic paintings, heroic battles of the war, Franklin and Washington raised to the level of gods. In this spirit, a 25-year-old graduate of Yale, Noah Webster, sets to work writing a speller for a new language, American English. We've been children long enough we must unshackle our minds and begin to act like independent beings. Let's not waste our lives mimicking our parents from other nations. We now have our own empire to defend and a national character to develop. Hamilton and Webster are the visionaries. Their nationalism is shared by only a small minority of their countrymen. Most Americans have never traveled more than 30 miles from the place where they were born. They view the world from a very local perspective. There was great competition to establish your way of life as the better way of life. New Englanders, for instance, had fairly negative things to say about Southerners who they thought of as decadent and as uh, uh, leisure-loving. They thought possibly the end of civilization was coming every time they saw a horse race or the men drinking or dueling or some activity that they considered to be not quite proper. To the Southerners, the New Englanders seem very suspicious and uh, kind of plotting and, uh, and uh, not open uh, and uh, not very genteel. They're kind of crabbed, uh, to use a word that, uh, that they used. Of course, stereotypes are the way we understand uh, people from other societies. Freed from British control, each state pursues its own independent course. Each state adopts its own system of government and prints its own currency. Some use English pounds as the standard, others use Spanish dollars. For most Americans, this local independence of the separate states is just fine. They are fiercely proud of their liberty to control their own fate. That's why they fought the revolution, and this is what they have won.